Now this video is really the second half of the story of my wife's passing away from alcoholism. Yeah, we were married for 25 years and she passed away uh, from alcoholism, alcohol-related injuries, uh, a little over four years ago. And this is really designed to help families understand and make people realize what families go to, families of an alcoholic, have to face in life and in death. Now, there were two specific incidences that were very difficult uh, after she passed away. Uh, one was very personal, but I'm going to go over both of these, so hang out for these. Now, the first incident that happened after she passed away it was about two weeks uh, after you know she died. Uh, and two police officers knocked on my door about 7 o'clock in the morning, and as they did many, many times, because my wife had warrants, uh, you know, for, for her DUIs, not taking care of stuff, you know, a, a lot of different things that she went through. But two weeks after she passed away, I mean, 7 o'clock in the morning on a Saturday, like they always do when they're looking for someone, so I came downstairs kind of befuddled as to understanding why two police officers were sitting at my front door. I had my, all I had on was my bathrobe. My son was away at a college and I was home alone. It was a really weird feeling. It was a very weird time in my life when uh, suddenly everyone was gone. Opened the door uh, and the first thing they said was, you know, where's Amanda? Where's my wife? I said, well, she passed away two weeks ago. And they kind of like almost chuckled like, oh, we've heard this one before. Yeah, she's dead, right? Now we need to come in and look for her. And I said, look, and I gave her, you know, very specific. Uh, you know, she passed away at UCLA. I gave her the date, the time. And they go, well, where's the death certificate? And I said, well, I haven't got it yet. She only died two weeks ago. It takes about a month to get the death certificate from Los Angeles Corner. And then they kind of backed off. I think I was pretty credible standing in my own front door. And you know, no, no, no offense to the police officers, they're just doing their job. But the emotions that you go through as a family member, um, just having this happen, you know, in your life, uh, it just, it's just, just an experience that was very odd, um, very, very sad. You know, it's just, I just, I wouldn't wish that upon anybody to have to go through that kind of incidents. People looking for your your dead spouse because they have warrants. Uh, it's an example of what the extremities of what people go through, what families have to go through when they have an alcoholic in the family. Now, the second incident that happened really bothered me. It was, you know, kind of personal, but I came home from work, you know, drove up in the driveway, and there's, you know, some boxes at the front door. And, you know, I, I buy a lot of books from Amazon. This, this was not an Amazon package. This was a bright blue box. It had nothing to do with any carrier that I'd ever seen. And as I got out of the car and walked up closer, I realized what it was. Uh, and I slowly walked up and I picked it up and I, I, I couldn't even believe what it was that I had in my hands. So I opened up the, you know, the front door, walked in and sat down on the couch and then I looked at it and it was, you know, Amanda's ashes. Uh, and it was, the thing is on the box it said, human remains do not leave. And, and whoever delivered it just left it on the front porch like it was another package. You know, and it, it was my wife's remains. And that really, uh, I think that bothered me more than anything that, you know, at the end of 25 years, you got a box of ashes. Uh, and it was a very, very difficult, I think one of the most difficult moments in my life, realizing just the finality of it. Um, so the reason why I tell these stories, this kind of a story, is as a deterrent for other families. Because there's a lot of people, there's a lot of al alcoholics, and there's a lot of other families out there that think it's not going to happen to them or you know there's nothing that they can do so if you have a loved one in your family you've got to do everything possibly that you can to save them if you truly love them uh, certainly if it's a child or a spouse some very significant relationship uh, i hope my stories help other people uh, and you know maybe you know even save other people and so again, if these types of stories are something that you have to worry about and you're concerned about with a loved one, again, click on the link above. You know, I've helped thousands of alcoholics, and most importantly, I've helped their families. Uh, again, please like, share, and comment. And again, I have a Facebook group called Amanda, A Cautionary Tale of Alcoholism. It's growing by leaps and bounds every day, so please join the movement. And again, thanks so much for listening.